for all sorts of reasons, not every child is beginning at the same no. point. And the system, as it stands, is set up to compare students to each other and to compare students to a, a system or a number. What Preston High really likes to do that we uh, really appreciate is that it, it challenges the student to compare themselves to themselves, themselves. Yes. and how much growth they're making. Yeah. When I've worked at other schools, often uh, it's just been about the grades. So did the student get an A, did they get a D, and the student that got an A would go, great, I'm awesome. And then nothing else, like they're still, they're just like, okay, I've done that skill, I've achieved, you know, ultimate music. Like, no, yep. you still have more to work on. And then the student who got a D would go, oh, I'm terrible at this. And they would throw it in the bin and they just go, oh, what's the point of even trying? Because I think when we frame the conversation around growth and we say to the students, this is where you are on your continuum, how are you going to keep growing? How are you going to keep improving? The onus goes back onto them, but also they feel like they can. They can achieve things that are for them at their level and is different to their friend and that's okay. It's not about, I'm not good at maths. It's actually, you've got a lot of room to grow in maths. So it's not, I can't draw, it's I can't draw yet. And there are specific skills within drawing that I can learn that will help me improve. I like how it forces you as sort of an expert of discipline to sort of deconstruct the knowledge within your discipline and sort of then reconstruct it in a way that you have these distinct behaviours. We don't say, well, in history, you're an A+. plus. We say in history, there are 30 different skills that we're looking for in your study of history. And then you're able to give it to students and they can say, okay, that's the field, okay. And once they self-mark or once they get their marks back, they can see their next step. They can see their, their, their history, they can see where they were, where they're at, and also reflect on what's the next step. It's a map. Yes, yeah. it's, a, it's a map, yeah. it, yes. And so you can have students with a really jagged profile on their skills. So within particular skills in humanities, they might be you know, up really high. In other skills, they might be lower. You can like target specifically what you need to grow instead of just thinking that, oh, okay, so I need to make it better. How can I make it better? You can look at it and you say, oh, so I got everything really good except, oh, next time I need to work on my editing or, oh, I need to make sure I'm using metaphors in a consistent manner or something like that. I'm not really sure. <laughs> it really demystifies like what makes a great essay or short story or what makes a great performance. It's not just guessing and like trying to go for this mysterious X factor. Like we're really uh, thinking about the processes that students can use to develop their work instead of just waiting for that day where they suddenly get the beam of inspiration. <laughs> Tracking the student growth is actually a lot easier and uh, communicated a lot more regularly than it would be if it was a semester report just with a percentage grade. It might uh, take a little bit of time at the start for families to sort of learn the way that we report here, but it's so important, it's such an important part of the work that we do to ensure students' growth and that it's worth putting that, that time in. It becomes more about who they are as a learner in, and they go, okay, this is where I'm at and that's great and I've got a teacher here to help me and I can feel confident in my learning. <laughs>